In today's aviation news recap, there is a lot to cover, so let me not waste any more time. In today's proceedings, I'll take a look at Embraer entering a new era, Turkish Airlines announcing a new route and also staying with Turkish Airlines, them eyeing a new order with Boeing. That's where I want to begin. Turkish Airlines is one of the many carriers that is currently in talks about finalizing a new aircraft order to support its future fleet. However, this aircraft order is most likely going to rest with Boeing. Yes, the under fire manufacturer that following crucial safety and quality issues coming to light have been under a lot of pressure. But despite that, they're still hoping to be the sole provider of this upcoming deal that would help propel Turkish Airlines forward to become an even bigger global leader in our industry. Interestingly, this could be considered a second part to a deal that was announced towards the end point of the 2023 calendar year. That one included Airbus aircraft. However, there have been very notable delays in getting the remaining part of the contract formally signed, announced, and I guess you could also say agreed to. As part of the significant commitment with Airbus, we saw up to 345 jets if we're also including options included in the deal. There was also 70 A350s unveiled alongside freighters, which will mean once all of these aircraft are delivered, they'll be the largest operator of the widebody series. Commitments were also made for the A321 series that has certainly stolen the show in the last couple of years, just thanks to its capabilities that it offers. But let's not focus on Airbus any longer, because notably the airline still wants to, or at least feels it needs to acquire, several hundred more aircraft from the wide and narrow body categories and use these planes as a way to propel itself forward for decades to come. Reportedly, conversations are still ongoing with Boeing. However, some analysts ultimately believe that a delay in the deal is part of the continued fallout of that door blowout incident, which has presented more questions than answers according to many. Turkish Airlines strongly denies these claims though, but they're never going to openly admit it. So as for this, I would just say it's words and to ignore that. A deal with Boeing would likely look to build on Turkish Airlines existing commitments to aircraft such as the 737 MAX and the 787. But again, the specifics around the total amount or variants that are included have not been specified and likely not even been finalized yet. Ultimately, as well, Turkish Airlines will look towards securing the best possible deal for the upcoming contract. This could be from delivery slots to the overall price. Typically, discounts are handed down on each aircraft purchase. However, these discounts are never publicly revealed, but they can almost sometimes top 50% off the list price value. Undoubtedly, Turkish Airlines will also want assurances that the aircraft it acquires from Boeing as part of this deal that is in the works are of the highest quality. This should be a staple and an airline shouldn't necessarily need to request this or make this known, but considering what's happened since 2024 began, well, it's not hard to see why they'd want to make sure these planes are in the highest order. So when they are eventually delivered, they don't come back to bite them with groundings, cancellations, and obviously the financial impact from there. Over to Embraer, who are entering a new era with the first flight of its E-190F a passenger to freight aircraft, thus identifying to me at least more potential in the popular single aisle regional airliner market. Quite the mouthful, but you get what I'm saying. The maiden flight, which lasted over two hours, took place in Brazil. Now, during this critical testing phase, several necessary evaluations were made. It is pretty stock standard before an aircraft can officially enter service, it needs to undergo ground testing and in the air testing alongside many other components. Those are just generalizing the main two areas. These flight tests will continue alongside more that hopefully we'll see one day this aircraft approved and then it can enter operations with freighter companies. Embraer, however, says that this aircraft type has actually already completed your relevant ground pressurization and cargo loading tests. The flight testing is often seen as one of the final steps to certification. Seen also as a new business opportunity for Embraer, the E190 passenger to freighter conversion will meet the present e-commerce demand, and what Embraer says is also continuous growing demand in this region. The EJet family now has this new addition through the P2F, and this should further cement Embraer's grip on the sector. 
And also remember, give companies opportunities and new ones for their aircraft that are reaching near the end of their passenger operational life. Say you are an airline that operates the E-190. This aircraft is coming to the end of its operational life in your passenger fleet, but you see potential movement in the e-commerce market and think that this aircraft could provide some use as a freighter plane. Well, in steps the P2F conversion market that we've seen take place for years at Airbus and Boeing and be successful, but now at Embraer. This passenger to freight conversion program were launched in 2022 and came following many studies that obviously had to signify enough demand. The global network for these two aircraft types, that being the E190F and the E195F, stretched to more than 40 suppliers alongside a workforce exceeding 600 with more than half a million hours dedicated to the conversion launch and more of this e-freighter. On to the final story and that is back to Turkish Airlines who are committed fully to expanding their route network with the announcement of its 14th route towards the United States. The airline has unveiled plans to serve Denver International Airport this summer commencing on June 11 service is expected to massively enhance Denver's global network, with this overtaking previous records set by other airlines to be the new longest flight. Labelled as historic, the airline will also become the 26th carrier to serve Denver. Flights are initially slated to operate thrice weekly and the A350-900 has been selected. Interestingly, the airline will quickly boost flights to Denver less than one month after launch, when on July 9th, a fourth weekly flight will be added. So initially, the three flights will depart on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays and Sunday has been selected as the day when we'll see that fourth flight added. According to a new analysis, the Turkish Airlines service is expected to have also some pretty significant economic impacts, around about USD 54 million. Additionally, this will create 350 new jobs across Colorado, which should generate 21 million in new fresh wages. Being a member of the Star Alliance means that connecting through Denver is going to be incredibly simple and helpful. A fresh expansion towards the US is really part of the the airline's continued efforts of becoming a global powerhouse, as I did touch on at the beginning of this video in the first story. But to propel it forward as a major global leader, new aircraft, new route, and obviously therefore a massive expansion of its employee base are required. There are also things that are planned. The airline has seen the growth and development in the Middle East and believes it can achieve something similar using Turkey's geographical positioning as a key base to push forward. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap. If you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop it down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It certainly does mean a lot. Take care, do be safe, and I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest aviation news recap. And flight, and we'll fly.